and as part of hardening your systems, making sure they're they're secure. Not only is patching important, but you also want to go through a basic process of disabling any unnecessary ports and services that are installed on the system. If if a service is installed and listening on a port, you want to shut it down if it's not needed for justifiable business reasons. If you can't shut it down, then you want to firewall it. Ideally, you shut it down, can't shut it down, you firewall it to prevent access. Ideally, on that host, a firewall on that host. Not a network firewall because then it's still susceptible to people that are on that same uh, subnet. The fewer ports and running services uh, you have open, um, the harder it is to attack. It's referred to as uh, reducing the attack surface of that system, right? We want to reduce the attack surface. It's kind of like, okay, if someone's going to shoot at me, I'm a bigger target like this, but if I stand like this, I'm going to be a little bit harder to hit. I'm reducing the attack surface, right? It just makes sense. Um, on a side note, um, let me pull up something I want to show you guys real quick. Um, so for instance, uh, you can come up to a, um, a machine, your Windows machine, and run the nestat command. And I always use the AON switch, and you can do this on your machine right now if you want to. It is uh, relatively safe. Um, and you can run that, and it'll show you all the ports that are open on your PC, and, and some of them that not are just open, but actually communicating, like established and time wait, and you see the other uh, statuses for all these ports. So this is, this is a communication state of my PC right now. Now, if I run that same command, and if you look down at the very bottom, I'm using the find command, and I'm typing the word listening in there. So these are all the ports that are open on my PC right now, waiting for traffic that you can talk to, right? So if one of these is open from a vulnerable application that can be exploited, it's a security risk. So ideally, we shut off as many of these as we possibly can. Now, of course, how do I shut them off? Um, what is what is this number here? Does anyone know what this last column is? What it is indicative of? What is the last column? Yeah, it is the uh, the process ID. So if you if you go to Task Manager and go to the Details tab, you see the process ID. So you can cross reference here. Good job, uh, Todd and Eric and Justin chatting that in. Um, you can find the process ID, and then you'll know what process has that listing. If you're trying to figure out why your PC is acting how it is and uh, what ports are open and things like that, cross referencing these two pieces of information. Uh, definitely um, very useful. Foundstone used to have a tool called fport, which would actually combine, sort of combine the output. It would show you um, really quickly what ports were open, what the process ID, and the path to the application that actually had that port open. And that's sort of what you want to get to. Now what you have to do is, is come over here, um, and you can choose the open file location and it will take you to the file um, that is nvxt sync.exe, for instance. Um, all right. So with that said, um, I want to know what ports are listening. If, if I see a new port listening today than I saw a week ago, it means I've installed another service on my PC that's open a port, or perhaps my PC has been compromised. Um, and, and that would obviously be a bad thing. And I have a short little batch file somewhere on my desktop. 
which is getting a little full. Um, and you can see here, this is just a quick little batch file. And what it does um, is it, it creates a log file putting um, the date and the, uh, the time into this file called uh, computer name. Basically, this is a variable. So whatever the host name is, the computer that this runs on, it's going to create a file with the computer name underscore ports.txt. Um, it's going to run that same nest command, find command, and it's going to put um, the open port. So it generates a file like this. Um, and I'm going to adjust the font just a little bit uh, smaller. And you can see um, on August 15th, 2017 at 10.49 a.m., uh, it showed me the ports that were open on this PC. Um, and it can, has continued to do that every time you run it. Um, it just adds that information. You can actually tweak this file uh, so that it actually, um, if you want to put some intelligence behind it, it compared what you know what happened last time with what's happening right now and if there was a new port open it could alert you and the reason for that would be hey it would let you know that maybe that PC had been compromised or maybe there was a change that happened on that PC that wasn't an authorized change